All right, hey guys, I thought I would do a little impromptu kind of video here. Uh, my area is maybe a little bit of a mess, but not too bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, yeah, I, I, I still have been thrift storing. I just haven't been recording my pickups. I kind of, I kind of took a bit of a break from, um, from doing those types of videos. I don't know, I just got a little burned out on them, but, um, as far as me sitting in front of the camera and bullshitting that, you know, I do plan on returning that at some point. Lately, I've been doing the the beer reviews, which I've liked. I've liked doing those a lot. Um, you know, I've I've been drinking beer for the past couple decades, no problem. Love the stuff. Had pretty much you know every beer in the book, but the past couple years I've I've been just drinking some really dirty bottom shelf beer, and I got into a habit of that. And then maybe a month ago, that beer became unavailable to me. And there's a lot of beers that are unavailable. And the list just keeps growing and growing, it seems, with more and more bad decisions being made. And I'm just going around and retrying some old beers, essentially. Because um, it's, it's good to know, you know, what, what my palate is up to these days. Um, so, for the most part, it, it seems like most beer's about average tasting, you know, like a middle-of-the-road type thing, but I don't know, it, it's been a, a fun little thing to do, um, it's middle of the week now, but I'm thinking about getting another Bill Jones six-pack on Friday, and hammering out a couple more videos, I don't know how long it's gonna last, though, I, I, I've already done about a full case, a full 24 videos worth or so. So, that might be a good sign for Anyhow, so that's just kind of what's what's up. Um, but I went to the thrift store today. Um, kind of, you know, I usually save it for the weekends, but I went middle of the week. And I saw this World Wrestling Entertainment book for two bucks. <clears throat> and I was like, you know, why, why not? And I thought I would share it with you guys as well. Uh, I, I looked in it. I think it said two thousand and three. So, uh, two thousand two is kind of my cutoff for when when wrestling was really, really, really good. Like two thousand three, we started to enter kind of a weird time period. Um, but, I mean, compared to today's stuff, it was still good. So let's just check it out. Let's see, I hope all this picks up well. So there's the set of Monday Night Raw. Definitely like like a 2002, 2003-ish kind of set. So some dudes setting up the ring. The ref here looks like I don't know. He's going through, going through some sort of crisis. I don't know. Edited by Ken Leaker and Mark Van Sill. Don't know who those guys are. This might work better if I move down here. <clears throat> So, yeah, I really hate the, uh, uh, 2002 was the last year you actually had the WWF logo, the Scratch logo, and it was called World Wrestling Federation. So, this is the first full year of them using the horrendous World Wrestling Entertainment name. I know exactly who that is right there. I skimmed this book earlier. There's a, a very frightening picture of him that shows up. Bit down the road, of course, Chris Benoit. So, I'm assuming this is Triple H, since he's obsessed with wrestling. So, 
Anyways, just thought I'd flip through this a little bit on camera. John Cena. <coughs> Man, I, I really need to get some uh, some of his vitamins. Cena is kind of shrunken down now. He doesn't wrestle full time anymore. He kind of looks like Ernest P. Worrell when he shows up now. He he straight up looks like you know Ernest goes to jail. Now that he's aged a bit. Yeah, Jericho. Jericho's such a fuck. I'm so tired of Jericho, man. He was awesome in WCW, and I don't know. I never really, I never really liked him much post then. Such an edge lord. But yeah, this could be a fun little read for me. Uh, before bed or something. Goldberg. Did he show up in 2003? I guess he did. Goldberg in WWE fucking sucked. Uh, all his magic from WCW, his mystique and all that. They just, oh, they didn't use him right. He, he should have been used like how Brock Lesnar's kind of used now. Where he's just, you know, like a once in a blue moon thing. The Hulkster, love the Hulkster, baby. <sighs> one, one of my all-time favorites. Can never get enough of the Hulkster. There's Edge kissing Hulk's ass. Matt Hardy. I'm assuming this is Jeff Hardy's arm. I don't think Matt has any tattoos. Yeah, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Shane McMahon. Tori Wilson. Oh, yeah. Tori Wilson has aged remarkably well. I was never the biggest Tori Wilson guy back then. Like, her and Stacey Keebler were kind of the combo package that came in from WCW. I like Stacey Keebler uh, a bit more. But, man, I would say of the two of them, she's aged. She's a little, aged a little better than uh, Stacey. Um, I actually kicked a boy in the shins in second grade for making fun of my father. Says Stephanie McMahon. I'm surprised Vincent have that young man killed. So... Kane sharing Aquafina with a uh, little Hispanic gentleman in his PJs, of course. This is, you know, just uh, worth taking a picture of, I guess. Jim Ross. Man, I listened to his podcast for, for a long time. Uh, a couple years, actually, pretty regularly. But I, I can't really listen to Jim Ross talk anymore. Oh, freaking uh, Sean O'Hare, he's passed away. Um, a lot of talent in him. Uh, Chris Nerwowski or something, he got like a concussion and quit wrestling. Harvard graduate. He's got a good good heel face, actually, now I look at it. Yeah. Too bad they couldn't get more out of both of these guys. RVD kicking ass. RVD was uh, extremely popular around this time. But I don't think Triple H wanted to put him over. Mmm, dead man walking. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep rolling, rolling. Yeah, come on. <coughs> well, here's to you. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Vince McMahon, the sociopath lunatic himself. Um, God knows what that dog has witnessed behind closed doors. Living under the same roof as this guy. Ray Mask Stereo. Go to Ray Ray. Ray's still active in the ring. I mean, he doesn't do a lot, but still technically active. The Rock, this was around when he left the business for Hollywood. Uh, Rock, I really liked in 98 as a heel. And then a lot of his shtick afterwards, I kind of was kind of done with The Rock. Like, he still entertained me here and there, but yeah, I absolutely can't stand him now. Him and Jericho, yeah, they both had a very short entertainment shelf life for me personally, but... I might be in the <clears throat> the minority for that group, you know. 
Nature Boy. <laughs> Nature Boy, just in the past couple years, I finally have started to been like, it's time to hang it up, Rick. Um, I met him in 2017 at a meet and greet. That was pretty neat. Booker T. Shawn Michaels reading about our Lord and Savior on a tree stump. There's the Canadian crippler Chris Benoit. Um, unfortunate what happened to him with the, the brain damage and all, but uh, as far as per, it's just, just wrestling ability goes, I would put him... Uh, I would put him in my, my top ten. Maven, the 2001 or 2002... 2001 probably Tough Enough winner. Or I don't know. It was like the first Tough Enough. Uh, kind of a dork, but he has a good drop kick. Uh, Lita... Oh, I'm going to sit back up here. Swig of water. <sighs> For Lita. Yeah, she was my favorite. Diva during the Attitude Era. Teenage Me was a, a huge mark. Her... Lita, it just feels right DVD. Got a lot of play in my DVD player. She looks kind of odd there, though. She doesn't quite look... I don't know, that's weird looking. <clears throat> maybe, maybe it's like photoshopped up or something. Alright. Uh, Nathan Jones, a guy... There's a lot of people in here with a lot of big talent that you really only saw... Very briefly, he had a very short wrestling career. He went on to Hollywood. He didn't like to travel or something. Um, it's Undertaker's first wife, Sarah. Or, I don't know, if he had a wife before her. Uh, Undertaker doesn't choose the best-looking gals, does he? She actually looks pretty good there, though. I don't remember her being that jacked. But, uh, you know, Undertaker's tattoos, it's funny because they just kind of look like a like big blue scribbled mess on his arms. Like, they seem to fade really quick, or, or to have faded very fast. So it's kind of nice seeing uh, an up-close still shot. Dead man walking, keep rolling, rolling. Brock Lesnar. Never been a Brock guy. I hated his debut. And 2002, again, it kind of felt like, uh, pun intended, the turning of a page of an era. From the Attitude Era to the Ruthless Aggression, which wasn't as good. And I don't know, it's never really like Brock. He was just a big dude. Triple H. I mean, it sounds like I hate everybody. Triple H was really bad during this time. Uh, held down a lot of dudes and stuff, but... I liked him the most when he was with China. Like, when he first developed the game character, him and China, as a team, and his Hold My Time music, I think that was when he was his best. Trish Stratus, never the biggest Trish guy. Um, again, I'm in the minority there. I think she's probably, like, the most over... <laughs> Diva for guys that watched in, um, during the Attitude Era. I don't know, she's just kind of like another blonde chick to me. But uh, I'm not going to complain about the pictures. There's Eddie, love Eddie. He's a top ten guy for sure. Wish Eddie was still around. Um, great, you know, on the mic. Great as a good guy, great as a bad guy. Uh, great wrestler. <clears throat> It's fun, entertaining. Um, yeah. Eddie definitely using some of John Cena's vitamins there. The Big Show. He's our giant. He's our Shrek. Yeah, I don't... 
Big Show, I thought he peaked in WCW as well. Christian, there's a guy I like. I find Christian to be hysterical. He's a good little schmarmy, I think is the word, you know. Kind of, I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't have the best physique, but I am... Yeah, I mean, he's a good guy. People like him, and he plays a good bad guy. And uh, I like Christian a lot. I like him more than Edge, actually. He's... <clears throat> He's the Michaels. All right, Jericho's little stupid band. <clears throat> the Goat. Most likely, I think, my favorite wrestler of all time. I do think it's cool, you know, seeing him shave his head there. All right. <laughs> time off is a wrestler's worst enemy. Oh, that might be interesting to read. Uh, Goldberg, not Goldberg, Goldust getting a low blow there. <coughs> Trish working out. Gray Mask Stereo just squatting. Squatting. Oh, I know what this is. <laughs> I'm like, he's just squatting somewhere randomly backstage in, in a cubby. <laughs> but this is that thing that used to launch him up for his entrance. Oh, yeah, that thing was really cool. Yeah, they don't do cool shit like that no more. Who's that jumping out the sky? Are you why Mysterio? Here we go. Um, Kurt Angle, he's a top ten guy for me. Again, you know, across the board, great good guy, great bad guy, great in the ring, great in the mic. Uh, entertaining as fuck. And could probably rip your head off even today. Um, what is this? Is this like full down or something? Oh, they're just stuck together. Matt Hardy version one. I don't know why there's what's going on here. Goldberg, you know, Goldberg was great in '98 in WCW. That's about it. Lance, uh, not Lance Armstrong. What? What's his name? Lance Storm. <clears throat> hell of a hell of a performer. Kind of limited on the mic, though. <laughs> they don't they don't make wrestlers like Scott Stein anymore. This is a fucking true man's man. Um, he may have taken an entire semi truck's worth of John Cena's vitamins, but holy shit, what an entertaining guy! He was buried by Triple H as soon as he got in the WWE, and we didn't get to see much of him there. But his WCW stuff on the microphone is god-tier entertainment. He later went to TNA, did some god-tier mic work. And uh, before all that, his even older stuff, you know, he was in the Steiner Brothers tag team. Just a very talented wrestler. His Steiner screwdriver um, could probably, like... I, I don't know, man. I'm surprised there wasn't like 15 fatalities over the years with that. Oh, there's the picture I saw earlier that was very frightening. Um, yeah, it's a shame. Uh, <clears throat> dead man walking. Okay. Victoria. Not too shabby. Uh, yeah, I had no problem with Victoria. I, I thought she was pretty cool in the ring, cool character. More of a wrestler than, like, a bikini model type person, too, which, um, you know, I like that the ladies, I like them to be both attractive and have some degree of wrestling ability. So, yeah, she was always cool. Um, Booker T., his segment was Stone Cold Steve Austin in the grocery store. I think it's 2002 or 2003. I, I watch it about once a year on YouTube still. It's the funniest. It's the funniest thing ever. Uh, Stone Cold and Booker T fight in the grocery store, man. I just... It's so... You don't get that anymore, you know. Shawn Michaels. Or somebody. 
It's very bizarre fingernails. Uh, HBK, one of the one of the greats of all time for sure. Yeah, this is from WrestleMania 19. Jericho and Shawn Michaels. There's Triple H. He put out some sort of, uh, I almost said cookbook. Some sort of workout book called, like, Building the Game, Become the Game or something. I don't know. It seems like... I don't know. Maybe it does work. Maybe it does work. I, th I think he's a vitamin enthusiast as well. Um... You, you can you can see when he stopped taking his vitamins as hard, uh, probably around 2003, 2004-ish. He got kind of a gut on him for a little bit. But, whatever. I don't care if they take the vitamins, man. Say, I, you know, say your prayers, take your vitamins, it's all good to me. You know. Some more of Bork Laser. <clears throat> Fat, Dimeless, Shitter, Bubba Ray. He, had, he was actually okay in TNA with Solo, though. I'll give him that. He was an okay guy. And he somehow managed to, like, date Velvet Sky for a while. Like, what in the fuck? It's uh, very strange. Cena being like, where's my vitamins, brother? Um, RVD. Again, RVD, awesome. He's, like, in my top 25. I would I would probably put him there. You know, he'd be closer to the 25 mark. But, um, you know, I remember back in, like, high school seeing, you know, seeing little images of him here and there, like, on the internet from ECW stuff. And even though I hadn't watched ECW. So he was kind of a legend before I even saw him, uh, you know, during the WWF invasion stuff. And then I was like, oh, this guy, like... He's really cool. He's a good wrestler. He does some a lot of um, how do I put this? He didn't really do a lot, but the few things he did, he did spectacularly. Um, so I was a really big fan of him for a couple of years. I got a little burnt out on him later, but uh, some angle stuff. Devon, there is Terry, whoa, it's a good book, it's a quality book, yeah, I do, I do miss the bimbos a bit, I mean, who, we had Mandy Rose in modern times, and like Dana, what was it, Dana Brooke, I think her name was, they're still around a little bit, but yeah, I don't know, you have like Charlotte Flair who tries to be a bimbo, but it doesn't it doesn't really work out? But good old Terry Runnels, <sighs> a lot of Goldberg in this. I guess he was a new hot commodity then. Nature Boy, of course. Everyone loves Nature. Growing up, his matches with Sting on on WCW that was like just. I don't know, the most entertaining matches to me, watching him and Sting have these big, like, 45-minute long, you know, classics, you know, every other week. Um, is that Goldberg's dad or something? I don't know. Vince looks pretty happy here. If you, if you didn't know Vince was, like, an evil, an evil gentleman, you'd be like, oh, that's, that's a nice picture. Um, yeah, and Vince looks very, like, happy. Of course, you know, I mean, Vince is a smart business guy. He can turn on the charm when he needs to. Um, page 143. It's a big old book. I think I'm, like, geez, like halfway through or something. Some, some big, slow stuff. I like, you know, I like Steph and Shane in the Attitude Era, but I think they kind of overstayed their welcome. Like, I didn't, I didn't need to see, the, see, you know, her on TV for the next million years. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Uh, Kurt Angle throwing Shane through the uh, breakaway glass. But it took him a couple tries because he was doing, like, the wrong one by accident or something. So he's just, like, belly to belly suplexing him against a wall for a minute. It's got to be WrestleMania 19. Austin's last match until WrestleMania 38 against Kevin Owens, which was a very good match. There's Edge. That's actually kind of a cool shot. I like that. It's all, in, you know, the motion of it. Um, for a brief time, brief, no pun intended, I guess, uh, Triple H did wear multicolored tights. when he Once he went to the short trunks, instead of his long, the long um, tights, yeah, he had like purple and red. Um, I'm trying to think if I saw him, remember seeing him in another color. He only did it for a very brief time. Like, I, I think he did it around WrestleMania 19, and he only did it for a couple months before he just went back to the all black. Um, which, I don't know, whatever. It, it was a nice, like, change of pace for a while, or at least, um, I think his WrestleMania 19 match, he wore white boots, which is kind of weird. Oh, there's Stacy Keebler again. Oh, my gosh. Absolute perfection. And Tori Wilson. Let's go back to Stacey Keebler for a bit. Sean Morley, Val Venus. Hello, ladies. Uh, the porn star gimmick. Pretty entertaining. Uh, but unfortunately, I feel like that kind of held him back later. Because, um, yeah, probably around 2002-ish. He the, he dropped the the porn star gimmick and um was he still just wrestling as Val Venus or was he wrestling as Sean Morley? I don't know, but I remember he had like a match against Stone Cold, you know, in SmackDown. I'm like, oh, they're really trying to like make him not a gimmick guy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. He wasn't he wasn't in the WWE. Um, for too long, I, I think it should have like 98 and maybe last summer around 2004. So, Conquistadors, Linda, more dead man walking, more bloodthirsty. There's classic Taker. I've been watching long enough that I was watching before The Undertaker even debuted, and he just recently wrapped up his. 375 year career um that's Brock Lesnar's big botch oh oof <laughs> yeah apparently he had done that shooting star press a bunch in the past and was and it, it landed it just fine but um the one time I ever saw him do it was here and he, he did not land it and if he did land it, that would have been a really awesome spot. But I don't know. I don't know if he was he was moving too fast, or he hadn't done it in a while, or what. Gold dust, Booker T jump roping. I recently heard that jump roping for fifteen minutes is like the equivalent of running for forty five minutes or something. I, I don't know. Shawn Michaels. Oh yeah, there was a while where he had this like. This little, like, little girl haircut thing. Um, yeah. But, thank God Sean returned, because he still had a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of awesome matches left in him. You know, he, he took, like, four or five years off, because this is a back injury, or something. And he came back, and, uh... Yeah, dude's juice, uh, crazy talented. May Young going to the table, or is that the fabulous Moolah? One of those two old bags. Rikishi, no thanks. 
You know, I was think I, I I've thought about this a few times. You know, when I was in high school, is when the Attitude Era was happening. I guess like late, late middle school through high school, essentially. Was the Attitude Era, and it was so good. Like I could not, I could not fathom not watching it every week. And I had a couple friends I talked to about wrestling. But a couple of them dropped off during the Attitude Era. And I'm like, how, what high demands and standards do you have that you're, you're missing this awesome entertainment because a few things suck? But I remember my, my buddy Eric, he was like, yeah, man, Rikishi, I just don't know anymore, man. Like, he stopped watching because of Rikishi. And looking at this picture here, well, I can't really blame him, I guess. Uh, is that Cena? I think that's Cena. Or, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. Kind of skinny. Uh, people ask me what it's like to stand the pyro when I come on a stage. It friggin' hurts. The, Gol the Goldberg pyro shit during his like first year in WCW was pretty epic to watch. <laughs> uh, that face. Uh, Triple H eating, uh, you know, he's conquered the boss's daughter. He's eating with his, you know, his hero, his childhood hero there. Just, just some good times. We got the uh, early 2000s sideburns, which I used to used to rock as well. I used to rock the sideburns. There's the rock. Without sideburns, he would usually have them. Or he did for quite a while. Yeah, again, rock just, I don't know, I'm over him. Your, your movies suck. You know, like, who cares, dude? We get it. We get it already. Enough. Stone Cold. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I saw this in the store when I was flipping through. So, sp speaking of Bimbo, Sable. Sable, like, I didn't, I didn't care about her at all when she, um... You know, back in like '98, for example, when she like painted her her upper body region and, and all that, I just it was like whatever. You know, it wasn't really. She was too like she was overly bimboy. But when she came back uh, after being gone for a few years, uh, like around 2003 or two or whenever, maybe it's because her hairstyle was a little less like I don't know. She she looked significantly better in the early two thousands than she did during the uh, attitude early attitude era. So uh, Brock Lesnar's wife, and of course I had uh, I had the Playboy with her, and I had the China one as well. Um, let's see. Not sure who that is. Who is that? I don't know. Um, Shane McMahon and his wife. Man, quite a chin on her. Good looking lady, but uh, that's quite the chin. I, I would like to uh, assume that Shane has been a loyal uh, guy, unlike his father. Because, uh, yeah, Shane, he, he seems like a, like a very fun, down-to-earth guy. Despite being born with, you know, a million dollar spoon in his mouth. More Big Show. More Jericho. That's Edge. Obviously, this is not would not be Edge's um, forever wife, as he then hooked up with Matt Hardy's girlfriend, Lita, a couple years later. And now he's with Beth Phoenix. But I think he's he's got his shit together. He definitely looks like, uh, what, Matthew Lillard from the Scooby-Doo movies there. An indoor pool. Like, you had it all, man. An indoor pool. That's all I want in life. Well, I could do without the dog, though. Two, two dogs? What the fuck, dude? No. Those aren't even, like, fun golden retriever dogs. Those are just... Um... 
Is that Billy Kidman? I just want to step in front of the camera, but... Oh, it is Billy Kidman. Who, uh, landed Tori Wilson. Oh, there, yep, yeah, there it is. Uh, Billy Kidman I liked in WCW. I, I kind of heard from shoot interviews. He was maybe, like, kind of just... Eh, maybe not the, the the nicest guy in WWE. But he's packing up all the shit, doing something there. I'll have to look at that closer later. Uh, Triple H, Stephanie. I was I was not allowed to date the wrestlers or anyone else in the company across the board. Some more Trish. That also looks like a nice uh, pool. Oh, she's got like an indoor hockey. Not indoor hockey. You know, whatever that's called. Like the, the foosball with the hockey players. Um, William Regal. I heard William Regal on Jericho's podcast maybe a year or two ago. And he he basically like broke his neck. And didn't know it. And, and and some sort of weird like thing formed in his neck. And he he basically spent like the past thirty years walking around with a broken neck. And then he had to go get this like intense surgery recently. So I don't know, but uh, Regal pretty much he's very you know well beloved by most wrestling fans. I mostly liked his. Uh, He's a man, such a man gimmick. Uh, more of the dead man and his wife, Sarah. Uh, getting sort of close to the end here. I find it kind of interesting that it's like all chopped up. Like you'd think it would be like 10 pages of JR and then it'd move on to 10 pages of Trish. But they're all kind of like chopped up here. I remember the uh, American flag logo. That was one of the first shirts with the WWE logo on it. Was that American flag one? I think. I think it was around them. Yeah. Anyways, whatever. Stone Cold, Stone Cold hunting humans, probably. That's a pretty cool picture. Do 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 do. Um, Booker T and Queen Charmel. Um, I wonder if it talks about Booker T robbing a Wendy's when he was like a teenager. Shawn Michaels and his puppums. Uh, that's like John Morrison or something. Lita and her puppums. Yeah, this is a pretty big book. I'm really going to have to be in, in a mark mood to read this, I think. But again, two bucks. I mean, even if I just make this video. Tori Wilson. Oh, Nature Boy putting Stone Cold in the figure four. I bet Stone Cold liked that. I know he's a big Flair fan. Yeah, the, around around this 2002-ish time, Flair still looked pretty good. Um, he probably should have hung it up after then, though. And... Kid, you've got to get yourself a biscuit. You're killing the business. You gotta get a biscuit. Biscuit, that's a Rolex watch. <laughs> and oh, I think that's about it. This is kind of cool. It looks like the the match is written out on the back. Benoit and Rhino. Proc Big Show. Haas and Benjamin, Eddie Chavo. And that is the same as the other one. 
it. Copyright 2003. There's a WrestleMania 20 logo. Oh, very good times. Yeah, just plain black book. So, oh, there's the sign. So that's it. I thought I'd just show off this book here. Something I might read, you know, before bed. You know, a couple nights over the week or something. Um, expect probably a few more beer reviews. But don't worry, this isn't going to turn into like an exclusive beer review channel or anything. It's, it's just something I've I wanted to fuck around with just to have some fun. Try, try some different beers and... And, and that's kind of it. And right over here, I am playing the first Tomb Raider game from GOG. And I gotta say, guys, fucking fantastic. About halfway through it, I. I I made it to a certain spot about a year ago, and I got a little stuck and just wasn't in the mood for it. Put it down, came back to it a couple days ago, and having a blast. So, Laura. <laughs> Laura would like to say, I'm trying to get her to turn around right. I'd like to say thanks for watching, guys. All right.